along 407 on the south side there of Winona. Our concern is, is that perhaps this is, and we've been watching for a while, it's been a concern that has yet to be realized that this could try to strengthen once again. This is as organized as this thunderstorm has looked in the last probably 20 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes, um, where we have a distinct area here where we have the, um, the precipitation on the backside here trying to wrap back around this. Um, and so that could be conceivably what this is trying to do again there as it gets more organized. Um, even the National Weather Service saying Eastern Chickasaw is trying. It is trying and it's got a little window unfortunately here because what we have now is we have a little bit of a break between where the other showers down south are, so the potential to maybe get some clean inflow on this. John, um, if you get a chance, let's look at dew points and see, we were waiting on a moisture surge coming north and see if this is still, I mean, we assume it's riding that moisture surge. Um, and I haven't talked about flooding and there's some flooding issues out there for quite a few spots. Um, okay, I'm a, I, I noticed that our over the air on NBC is down the tower and ABC. Okay, there's an issue there at the, at the Woodland Tower. Okay. So no NBC. No NBC. ABC. No ABC. Only on, Fox. Only on Fox. And we're also on the WTVA Weather and WTVA this News apps. Over the air. So, uh, and MeTV. So our over the air signal has gone down on some of those. Um, but we are on Fox. Okay. Good deal. And MeTV. Okay. Fox and MeTV. Okay. Um, so WTVA News, WTVA Weather apps. Um, if your signal goes out and it does look like we are back. Nope, that looks like a locked up image there. So we'll see if it comes back over the air uh, here in a minute on our transmitter side up there. Um, for a moment, before we get, go in too far, I want to take two seconds here. Eh, they're upgrading to a tornado warning. We're not going to do that. We're going to come back in. So new tornado warning. Yep, see we talked about it. Had that little, little zone there out here. Amory, Smithville, they're going back with tornado warning on this because of the history of this storm, and it definitely has strengthened. Uh, heads up for you. Uh, new tornado warning coming on this here in just a moment. They're going to take it all the way to the Alabama state line. So as you can see now until 11.15 p.m., tornado warning issued here for eastern Chickasaw and most of Monroe County. Um, the most impressive part of this is a little bit north, potentially a little north of Aberdeen. Let's, let's check it. E That's close. I would say it's centered more on Becker, um, but certainly we show Wren at 1048, Amory at 1053, Hatley at 1056. Um, watch the potential there that we could have um, a damaging storm and potentially a tornado moving towards Smithville at 11 p.m. This is the same storm that caused all that damage um, south of uh, Winona and all the way back into the Delta and it's trying to strengthen and do it again. Um, it is probably not at this instant doing it but it is close because what's happening here is this inflow area is going to wrap back in and this is going to kick back out and it's going to try to do it out here close to Gibson maybe just east of 45 alternate is where it's kind of looking at I'd be looking closely this is Egypt right there very near Egypt Road about a mile mile and a half east of the um, 45 alternate area where it is going to try very hard to wrap back up and produce another tornado um, Amory, with what we have had happen tonight, Smithville, I know how you feel when I call you out on any storm. Um, this might not be at that same level, but it has gotten a lot stronger and it has a history of doing it. That's enough for me and I hope that's enough for you that we go to that safe place. We'd say best case scenario, we're looking at uh, around 1057 for Amory. It might be a little bit faster than that, maybe a minute or two faster than that. Smithville, close to 11 o'clock for you. A lot of other folks here that I'm not listing, such as Wren at about 1050. Obviously, the Egypt area, it's over top of you right now. And I'm going to bring in our meteorologist, John DeLusic, here for a second, who has, has some information. Yes, John? The dew point, that little mo moisture surge uh, that is showing up right now, basically we're at that point right now in Tupelo and area southward toward the Golden Triangle. As a matter of fact, uh, Oxford, uh, excuse me, Starkfield coming in at about 70, lower 70s dew point right now. And there's a good surge going all the way up into about 
feeding that storm that's been coming in basically on it's on the tip of that dew point surge. Yeah, you're you know, right. It so looks like a, I mean, it even looks like a little wave there. Yeah, it's a big wave. It's just coming in. And again, I'm not sure about that uh, Starkville that's 72, but that's a pretty high dew point for Starkville. So, so what this is, is this is riding, this is the moisture nose, and it is just, it's basic, think of a surfer riding a wave, right? And this is riding the wave of moisture here, um, and it's, it's followed that leading nose of the stronger winds aloft and moisture for hours. Um, the likelihood is that this could produce a tornado and a strong tornado soon. And so if it's producing one or not right now, doesn't matter. A strong tornado could be coming for this storm very soon. Yes, hold on. Okay. I, while tornado damage, let's pull John down here for a moment here. While tornado damage isn't something I can confirm at this moment here, I would say where we talked about a moment ago here, right there near Egypt Road, this is probably going to be a tornado within the next scan. So I believe that we are within moments of seeing this produce a tornado once again. Um, the only positive here is that this is not the most populated portion of Monroe County, but unfortunately some of the most populated portions of Monroe County are in the path of this. So as I go back to the wind mode here, that is, that's not, not a good thing. When you see the red, and it's kind, it's, it's kind of a radar error there, but when you see it like that, a lot of times we're looking at debris the next time we get data. And I can't say for sure that that's not already Turnbull Road right there on Egypt Road. We'll get a new scan here in a moment, and there it is. There's our tornado, right where we talked about a moment ago. Here we are. So we now have a tornado on the ground, Monroe County, uh, Egypt Road, just east of that by less than a mile. Tornado on the ground doing damage at this moment on Turnbull Road in Monroe County. We need to make sure that we're in the middle of a sturdy structure, a small windowless room where we can wrap up with blankets and pillows, put on a helmet to protect ourselves from debris, and stay there till we can give you the all clear. Significant damage possible out of this storm uh, at this time. Let's look at the precipitation mode that's going to make sure we get the right angle on this. This is moving more north. Wren, right now, this is wrapping more north. White Rock Road up here working in the direction of McAllister Road. You're in the path of this in the next couple of moments and it might be moving faster than what I think it is. I'm gonna track this a little faster. I might be too fast. I'd rather be too fast than not. But Pat, we now have a tornado in Monroe County. Where's Craig? I've got Ethan in Starkville and Craig going to, to Boonville. With okay, then let's take Ethan up to this. Okay. I mean, wouldn't you agree? safely get from Starkville to... We'll look at that. Remind me in about 30 seconds here. Okay. Um, there are some times. Wren, 1050. I went up to about 60 miles per hour on this. This is textbook stuff here, unfortunately. Um, tornado damage on what is possibly a strong tornado occurring right now in Monroe County, just east of 45 alternate, approaching US 45. Where it shows Wren there at 1050, that would be where it crosses US 45. So as you can see, Large tornado, considerable damage possible out of this thunderstorm, an extremely dangerous thunderstorm, and they've ta taken it up to 65 miles per hour on the movement. We're going to get a shot here in a moment of the angle. That's coming toward Wren. So it didn't move as far north this time. Unfortunately, this storm's finding balance, and that's not a good thing because the balance is going to allow it to maintain this tornado. Bigby, Wren, Amory, let's go wide here for a second. John's going to have to tell you whether or not Ethan can get up there. I'm not going to have time to go to that. Um, so, Wren. Yeah. Close. Maybe just south. I wouldn't go by my maybe on this here. We need to be in a tornado safe place. There's going to be people with Wren addresses, people that consider themselves um, residents of Wren, that this is a strong tornado. Um, and Amory. This is a close call. Let's do a wide track here for a moment. I'm gonna track it at 65 miles per hour. I'm gonna go 60 miles per hour. I'm gonna track it. Take this picture, send it to somebody. Find somebody you know in Monroe County. Somebody text Craig's wife. Make sure they're aware that this is a strong tornado on the ground. This is a storm that's had a history of producing significant damage and could be producing, is producing a significant damaging tornado right now. 
And as the folks at the National Weather Service Birmingham looking at this storm say, velocity is off the scale. I mean, this is a bad one. Middle of a sturdy structure, a small windowless room, wrap up in blankets, pillows, put on a helmet to protect yourself from debris. If your city is in that list there, we need you in your tornado safe place. Now, let's come street level here. Let's look at what we're looking at. And by the way, this is a situation where unfortunately there is no question. White Rock Road, this is a strong tornado producing significant damage now approaching McAllister Road, moving 65 miles per hour. That's more than one mile per minute. Call ahead. Wren, people need to know. I mean, you see that dot there in the middle? That's the middle of the tornado. And there's the damage, the debris circling around the middle of the tornado right now. We're very close to the radar site, so it's highly likely that we're sampling a good chunk of the tornado um, and certainly the circulation just above the surface. This is a strong tornado that Wren, let's show the time here, and I show current time is 1046, 1047 Wren. An old Wren road, this is going to be extremely close. So I highly recommend that you take this seriously. This is a tornado emergency for Wren, for Northern Monroe County, a confirmed large and violent tornado potentially on the ground right now producing significant damage. We need to be in our tornado safe place if we expect to survive this. Let's show you the, the wind mode here, how fast that wind is rotating. And I show a wind change of more than 150 miles per hour on this. Moving into the Wren area, looking at the debris mode, still showing about that stock. And this red ball that you see right there is all the debris moving over McAllister Road now. Where would we say it is? I expect the next scan that you will see this right about here. Honestly, it might be slightly ahead of that. So let's adjust our track appropriately. Ren, we need to be in our tornado safe place. You can see some times there. I'm going to make sure our angle is correct on this because... The angle matters. It has actually moved slightly, slightly more east on this one. But that is still the darker purple colors you see there is tornado debris and damage on a strong tornado approaching US 45. <sighs> this is a bad one. And this could be a loss of life situation. If you know folks who live on Little Kunwa Road, U.S. 45, approaching uh, 45, this is regular 45 there. Um, this is 278, we're west of Amory here. This is a tornado on the ground, Watley Road. Every bit you see here is because of a significant tornado causing damage. This is as low as our correlation gets. What we're looking at is we're looking at trees, tree branches, dirt, and possibly structures. This will be a killer if it hits you and you're not in a sturdy structure. This is a strong, damaging, life-threatening tornado. Now let's get an angle for Amory for just a moment here. As I place, I'm gonna just do it on my screen here. Make sure we have the angle right. Okay, this is north side of Amory. Maybe just, maybe just, maybe just north of the waterway. I'm gonna adjust our stuff here in just a second. Let's get it to the latest scan. We're now just east of 45, just east of 45 now on the latest scan here. Just uh, east of 45, we're hearing significant damage reports coming in there. We'll find out more. Yes, hey, Pat, where was that at? Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, we'll look at that here in a minute. So some, some, damage, some wind damage in the Tupelo area as well um, with, with, I mean, that just shows you outside of this. So some significant damage even outside of these storms. But Amory, um, clearly five minutes, best case scenario, Midtown. This is a close call on the north part of Amory. We've got to be in a, a tornado safe place. This could have the potential for catastrophic damage. As we mentioned about five minutes ago, tornado emergency now in effect for locations in Amory, Big B, Flynn, and Smithville. As I extend this track ahead, make sure that we have Smithville in that track. We show 11.03 for you. 
Um, New Salem at 11.08, 11.10, Tilden Academy at 11.14, but Wren over top of you now, a damaging and potentially deadly tornado. If you're a praying person, I don't, I, we've had to ask for this a couple times tonight. Hope you'll save some prayers for those folks down there in Monroe County tonight. They definitely need everything they can get. Coontail Road. Now we show it just south of US 78. This is the Tennessee Tom Bigby waterway there. This is Bigby. This is going to track extremely close to where we had a damaging tornado a couple of weeks ago. Looking at the wind mode, yet to update on the position, but um, that's a strong tornado at this moment. It does look like we're back on over the air. In case our over the air signal goes out again, we uh, are streaming live on Facebook Live, WTVA News, WTVA Weather app. Check that out. That's a place where you can stay up and ahead of this. Tornado debris lofted so far at least uh, 7,000 feet up in the air with this. As we talked about earlier, the height of how high that tornado debris is lofted well, it correlates back, comes back to how strong it is. So now we're talking possibility that we're dealing with a strong tornado, at least EF2 in strength there. Considering the strong winds that we've had on this um, and the wind reports we've seen on StormTrack Doppler radar, uh, there's nothing particularly shocking about that. Um, the wind mode yet to really update on that. There, oh, okay, so a couple things going on. We have a big radar error here. That's a huge radar error on that, but that still shows likely a strong tornado here just east of Amory. How far to Amory are we talking about? Let's get a storm track that has everything I could put on it, on it for a moment. And then I'm going to move that down just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to move it to the middle. I'm going to try to cram as much stuff on here as I can for a moment because I want to keep Amory City Grid on this. And again, assuming we're moving 65 miles per hour, I would say the western few streets in Amory were now less than two minutes away. This is a strong, life-threatening tornado that's going to move either extremely close to Amory or in through the northern part of the city of Amory. And here's the thing about this. Y'all trust me too much. Okay, I tell you where it goes and some of you are like, that's where it's going to go. But the reality is, is that this could cha be changing directions. Okay, so Amory, we need to be in our tornado safe place. We got a new scan coming in here as we speak. Oh man, like north side of Amory, this is coming in. Oh man. Dear Jesus, please help them. Amen. Okay, so this is going to track along Highway 25. Unfortunately, this is cut farther, a little bit more east. So I have it slightly beh behind me there. This is going to cross the Highway 6 bridge within the next 20 seconds or so. Is that, first off, have we made all the phone calls for folks we need to talk to in Amory? For a second. Somebody called Craig's family just to make sure. Just, you know, just want to make sure we've had that conversation. I know Craig's probably done that, but I just want to make sure we've done that. Okay. Um, this is probably moving through the northwest portion of Amory now. It has shifted just enough. Golly, no, this is going to be right there. So we have to be in that tornado safe place. Small windowless room, place we can wrap up in blankets and pillows. This is moving along Waterway Drive as we speak. Lowest floor of a sturdy structure, Boulevard, um, North Boulevard Drive there in Amory. This is going to be moving I mean, really on the north side of town, unfortunately. Man, and this is a bad one. Northwest side of town. This is moving through the city grid here. I really hope folks are in their tornado safe place because this one's really bad. Um, the debris is lofting now up in excess of 16,000 feet. Just a reminder what that means for a brief moment here. That means now we're up possibly EF3 or greater. It takes it a while before that, that stuff comes back in. So this is a strong tornado doing damage to well-built homes and structures on the northwest side of Amory. Um, this is going to track along Highway 25, Smithville, Flynn, We've got to be in that tornado safe place. This is heading right toward you. And again, as you can see here, this is a tornado emergency in effect, a large and destructive tornado on the ground at this moment. I, I don't know how more I can say it, 
but that if you know somebody that's out here, maybe their signal goes out from time to time, maybe it's Friday night and they're you know, doing whatever people do on a Friday night, they've got to know that this could be a killer. 1101 into Smithville, based on 65 to 70 miles per hour. We now have debris up 15, 20,000 feet. Revisiting that unfortunate graphic. Um, now we're strong, EF3. Um, a deadly situation on our hands if not taken seriously. Back to the debris mode. This is on the northwest side of Amory. I mean, I show debris here with the northern city grid there on Amory. So this is tracked on the north side of Amory and it's along the Tin Tom Waterway. Whereas a couple weeks ago, we, we population wise got lucky and it was just north of the waterway. This is going right along 25 up to Smithville. So folks in Smithville, we've got to be in a tornado safe place. Uh, this, this is bad. I'm going to go just a little bit wider on this for a moment to do a longer track. But um, this is a bad, bad night for folks there. Um, let's track that. Here's your longer track for a moment. Flynn, we show 1058. These three right there, we're going to revisit the time. That's pretty close to what we said a moment ago there, but I want to get it down as close to the second as I can here in a moment. Academy at 1111, Tremont 1113, Shotsville 1119, Weston at 1120, Vina at 1127, Atwood 1129. This is a damaging and potentially deadly tornado that's moving through northern Monroe County. John, if you get the chance, let's look at the mezzo that's come out, um, and which I, I will bet bucket loads of money is probably just because of this specific storm. Tornado debris, north side of Amory, moving along Highway 25. That's all this is. This is a tornado debris signature. If I put my next scan, my tornado is going to be a little ahead of it, probably right there, moving towards Smithville. So latest, based on that next latest location, I show Flynn. We're looking at that for you, 1058, Smithville Recreation Area, 1059, 10 o'clock for, or excuse me, 11 o'clock for basically all the different Smithville locations there. Um, a strong, potentially violent tornado doing damage at this moment, moving along Highway 25. Um, this, is, this is just a really, really bad one. Moving toward Turon as well. Let's track it longer. And if that continues to go ahead, New Chapel, we show at 1104, 1106, New Salem, Turon at 1106. This is a, a damaging, strong, and potentially deadly tornado. Uh, in Monroe County. You can see that latest update exactly where we expected it would unfortunately be. We should have a new debris signature and unfortunately the debris signature looks like it could be a little wider uh, than it was a minute ago. I mean if we're looking at the width of this, looking at a width that is uh, a debris spread of probably more than uh, two miles, how wide the debris is showing up on here. Moving northeast at 65 miles per hour towards Smithville. So this is a strong tornado and potentially a, a life ending tornado. People's lives are changing tonight. People are going to be recovering for months from what we are watching right now. And so whatever prayers you're willing to send up for them, um, I'm sure they would appreciate it right now. I put our location of our tornado now pretty much right in Flynn along Mississippi Highway 25. This is north of Smithville Road. I'll get Smithville on here. I'm going to clear it off so that Smithville shows up on there for a moment. But Smithville, this is obviously for you. So I show it in your Flynn, your Full Mile Road right now along Mississippi Highway 25. Within 20 seconds, it'll be Caldwell Road. Within 30 seconds, it'll be Davis, North Davis Road. Within the next minute, it's going to be Smithville Road near the intersection there of Highway 25 and Smithville. Pecan Road. I mean, this is moving right into town on the southwest portion of town. Within two minutes, we're going to be an industrial street in Smithville. Within about... Uh, um, maybe two minutes and 10 seconds or so, Walnut Street, and within the next two to three minutes, Monroe Street, and where Highway 25 curves northward in Smithville. This is a tornado on the crown that's prompted a tornado emergency. That is the highest level tornado warning. I have no extra gear that we can go on this. This is as bad as bad potentially gets. And I know you've had that before. That is not this sporadic damage. This is that wind we talked about in North Gloucester a minute ago, the damage that we had. This is not, you know, some stuff like this. This is a situation where instead of the awning being knocked down like that, it could be completely gone. Let's hope this thing weakens its possibility, but this is not minor. This is potentially major. Um, now, I, 
This is not quite the same debris signature we had a moment ago there. We have to be in that tornado safe place in Smithville. Anything positive, I say, is a relative nerd term and has nothing to do with how strong this actually is. Four Mile Road, there's an encouraging sign that maybe it's weakening, but this has gone from an extremely strong tornado to still a, a damaging and potentially large tornado here near Flynn moving here near maybe, maybe, maybe just south of Smithville, but it's close enough that people in Smithville, I'm taking that back. We need to be in our tornado safe place there, clearly. I, it would be way premature for me to hope it was going south, because that's, we'll see. But unfortunately, this is, I mean, no, it's not. This is, this is right in here, southern half of Smithville right here. I know folks that missed out in 2011, nobody thought missing anything but didn't get hit in 2011. This is kind of aimed more at the south side there than that tornado was. Still a very strong circulation showing up on this. And there it is on the latest scan. I would show it near Smithville Road right here is where it is. That wind is a little behind. That means a new debris signature showing up on the south side of Smithville area along Smithville Road, Gap Road, Seminole Road, all basically now by this moment, because it takes at least a second or two to get that data back now in the tornado. So Pecan Chapel Road, Jug Shop Road, Mackenzie Road, Kennedy Road, Faulkner Road, all in the path of this damaging and potentially deadly tornado. The wind is just hanging too slow, so we're going to have to stick with the other factors on this. I mean, even this isn't hard to figure out how that's wrapping in there all the way around. And the, it's right there. That's potentially a big tornado still um, and likely huh, I am moving through the south side there, unfortunately of the Smithville area. So let's now put it, again, I put our tornado right here. This is where it shows up on radar. It's right road at this moment, and probably about as wide as what my circle here is showing, approaching Kennedy Road on the south side of Smithville. Near Pierce Chapel Road, as we wait for the debris signature to update, it has moved a little more east the last couple of scans. I'm gonna cheat this up north just a little bit. That's where we expect our next um, tornado report. So again, what are we looking at? We're looking at a no questions here. This is an area of Doppler radar indicated rotation that's developed into a tornado that while I have not had it spotted, we have debris and that's good enough. We know for sure that this has been a tornado, that this probably still is a tornado and it pulled north. Let's get this angle. So we might have had both Smithville, at least a portion of Smithville and a portion of Amory. Yeah, it's pulled a little north on this last scan. Let's see what the rain radar looks on that. I mean, there's little wobbles on this. It's pulled north just a little more at this instant, heading more toward Turon, but I think we still can probably keep primarily a northeastern track on this. So let's put, let's advance it forward. Let's put that right there near State Line Road. Um, Obviously, just east of Smithville, a lot of Smithville addresses here uh, experiencing this at this moment. So I track that northeastward. We show Turon at 11.05. We've got to be in our tornado safe place if we're ahead of this in southern Itawamba County to get some times there on your screen. I'm going to double check kind of what we have. A lot of folks um, sending in their pictures, a lot of safe place selfies and things like that. Um, coming in. We appreciate that. I'm not going to really show a whole lot of those at this moment here, but let's just um, just hope those folks in Monroe County are in your in your court on this one. We're certainly going through this one with you, um, though it probably feels vastly different. Let's talk back here for a second. Amory, we can come out of that tornado safe place. Hatley, we can come out of that tornado safe place. And if you live east of um, Mississippi Highway 25, we need to stay in that tornado safe place. If you live west of it in Monroe County, we can come out. Let's still stay in our tornado safe place up here near New Salem. Everything west of 25 up there maybe, but yeah, this has turned more toward Turon in the last scan here. Let's check tornado debris. It's still showing up. This is not as quite as intense as what it looked like a minute ago there, um, but still showing up with tornado debris on this thunderstorm. As we check the wind mode, um, yeah, that was still strong, still likely on the ground there um, east of Smithfield. This is going to update up here near the county line uh, in a moment. That's 
That data is still processing at the moment, but I show it right along Mississippi Highway 23 in Turon is where our storm, our tornado likely is near Davis Road. Let's go ahead and circle it once again. Along Davis Road, moving near Turon, Duncan Lakes Road, Bento Knight Road, Salas Road, all in the path of this tornado that's likely still on the ground doing damage as we speak. Um, so your time has ticked down. Minute just changed to 10.06 on there. When I pulled the storm track out, it was 10.05. It's on you in Turon. Um, as, as the folks in the National Weather Service noting on this as well, um, reports that this has um, been on the ground now with debris detected on this for at least 20 minutes. Um, so, so significant damage still um, possibly still occurring with this. Yep, so there's our circulation shield jump, jug shop road. We should have a new update with debris here in a moment. And this might be actually our new update. I'm starting to make it in there. So let's go wider. Just to double check, um, uh, John, Ane, any information coming in from the field, from folks on social not, media? Not from, the, from the spotters. Uh, there's not much uh, uh, for reports right now. Uh, and again, nothing from the Amory area yet. Which I'm looking around, just uh, even stuff that's not in a tent for our attention. I'm just looking to see if there's anything. I think everybody's still uh, in their shelter. shelter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's we, the best way to be. That, here. That, uh, nothing makes me more excited to hear you're finding nothing because nothing means people weren't out doing dumb things. So, so that's, that's good. Um, but still, as you can see, tornado emergency, southern Itawamba County here. Um, the tornado debris is continuing to spread out. This is a good sign. It's possible one of two things has happened. Our tornado's weakened. That for sure has happened. The question is, is the tornado still on the ground? That's the second of these. I can't say for sure, but this is an indication that it might have lifted. Um, but it's also a possibility that we have, a, we have a zone here. If you look closely, do you see this right there, that lighter area and that lighter area there? We have a bad look at the radar from the radar site up here. There's some trees uh, and some other things that block this Monroe County radar up, up north like this. And so sometimes that can change our view because you'll notice that those lines stay put there. And so we're reading through it right now. I'm hoping that maybe it has weakened. But unfortunately, um, maybe some of the weakening we're seeing is just that we have that beam blockage. Whether this has weakened or not doesn't matter because this is still strong enough that even if it weakens, it could easily wrap back up very quickly. So we need to continue to assume that even though my debris does not show up as strong as it did, that this could potentially still be, I, mean, I show right there near Bentonite Road, that's where I'd have my circulation. So we need to start circling this again um, because it's less obvious on the debris mode than it was. But as you can see, a tornado emergency remains in effect for Itawamba County. If you live back here in Monroe County, back in Smithville, Parham, we can come out of that tornado safe place there. Let's see if we can clear Monroe County as a whole. There's still damaging winds on the eastern side of this, but our tornado is probably up here in Itawamba County based on the latest of what we're looking at. Um, and I, if, if by some miracle that tornado did lift, it's about to re-strengthen and set back down again. And it might have stayed down the whole time. It's very reasonable that it never picked up. We should get a new debris signature probably up here near Salas Road on the next scan that comes in. That's where we have our channel kind of feeding in there. Hold on, let's make sure that's the latest one. Maybe slightly south of that. I need to have a broader circle. It implies more specificity than I have at the moment. Check wind mode. Yeah, so this is a little broader than what we've had it. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a bigger tornado, but just to say that where it appears next, there's a lesser certainty. So Salas Road, um, approaching there, Booth Road, Hopewell Road. This is all south of Amory, excuse me, south of Fulton, northeast of Amory in Itawamba County, so south of Tremont at this time where this area of circulation is. Let's get kind of a wider track for a moment. Can have more stuff in it. There's kind of our wider shot. We show Guthrie Cut Church at 1114. I'm gonna get this a little better here in just a second. Basically this next 
five to seven minutes. We're going to zoom in on that a little closer. But as you can see, some of the locations in advance of that as this moves into West Alabama and out of East Mississippi over the next 10 to 15 minutes. Coming back to the wind boat on StormTrack Doppler radar, we have a strong area of circulation and potentially still a tornado that if it is not on the ground producing damage right now, it's, that, that would be a very fortunate turn of events. I still show tornado debris on this. I mean, that, that's still tornado debris right there being detected on StormTrack Doppler radar. So at this instant, Hopewell Road, where we show this approaching, as you can see, Sedate Line Road Southeast, where our tornado is moving to at this moment, or at least very close to at this time. And there's a couple spots here where I can make my argument, but this is just extremely strong winds one direction, wrapping around with extremely strong the other. Um, let's go up a scan and let's see if that'll clarify where our where our mesocyclone is, which helps this to, um, to kind of form the way it is. So let's go back here and we'll go up a scan. Okay, as you could, so if you go up a scan, it's almost more that little interaction right there that is the strongest. So I think our positioning here is pretty close and where we expect the next the next tornado report to be the next scan, probably right within that circle there. Um, National Weather Service is going to extend their considerable tornado warning. What that means is they're going to back off from the tornado emergency probably. I believe that's where they're going to go on this here with the next one. Either way, still expecting that this is a, a damaging storm, potentially still a tornado um, causing damage at the moment. I mean, I still show right there what might be debris what probably is debris right there. So yeah, I still probably have a tornado doing damage at this moment. There's, I, think, I think confidently I can say I have a tornado South Academy doing damage approaching the Mississippi-Alabama state line. So this is I-22 at the top here. Let's figure out crossing time on I-22 as well. First off, let's address where it is. Hopewell Road, Frederick Road, State Line Road Southeast, White Whitehead Corners Road, Pale Road, south of James Creek Road, south of Mississippi Highway 23. We still continue to have a tornado likely causing damage at this moment. That's what that blue is there. Now, it's not what we had earlier, as intense as it was, but right there near this triangle between Frederick, Hopewell, and south, north of Booth Road there is where we have likely still a tornado at this instant. The wind mode has tended to run a little behind some of our others. The precept mode is typically lead, and I do think our positioning is right on that. Let's address it. Let's adjust it eastward just a little bit more on this latest scan here coming in. I have less debris showing up, and my wind is still a little bit behind. Wider shot. Just a moment here to make sure that I've got a lot of stuff coming in on my phone. Make sure it's not something we have to have from some folks here. Okay, same stuff going on. Okay. A lot of prayers going up from around the area for folks ahead of this thunderstorm here. Um, and as it went through, we hope to have more information out of Monroe County here in a minute. Um, first responders, people like that, continuing to kind of figure things out on the scene there. That takes some time. While we are interested in trying to bring information, we also don't want to uh, get too much in their way or in their way at all, honestly. And we encourage you to stay in. We'll hopefully talk to the emergency manager in Monroe County here in just a little bit if we can. So we'll try to talk to the emergency manager in Monroe County. I don't know if um, Daniela is hearing me or not. Hey, Daniela, let's try to talk to the emergency manager in Monroe and Chickasaw counties if we can, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so when this makes it the Bexar there, 1118, that would be when it cross I-22. So we're showing in about four minutes, assuming still about 65 miles per hour, uh, how fast it's moving. Um, so new tornado warning issued on this to, for the National Weather Service in Memphis, trying to give it enough time to get out of the county there. Um, still possibly a tornado, um, though I don't have as much debris showing up on this. This wind signature is still extremely strong. At the very least, this is damaging winds on the front side there near Lundy Road. I mean, this is still turned up enough there, that, turning up enough that it's, 
Um, if it's not producing a tornado, it easily could once again. Um, it would not be difficult for that to happen. We got a wide, for, give me two seconds to go wide. We have not looked at anything else for about 30, 40 minutes now. Um, let's go back to the regular precipitation mode on StormTrack Doppler radar. Make sure there's nothing that we're missing. I don't see anything, John. John, we don't see anything in here. Um, an A that we need to worry about. Let's just, there's nothing there. But we do have some information on meteorologist John DeLusic. Uh, go ahead, John, what you got? And on a night that's been bad news, good news is EMA director from Montgomery County uh, just talked to our Chris Snalls, and he talked to him and he found out that there were no deaths uh, in, um, in the Monroe, Monroe County area. No, 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 no. Oh, Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah, I'm sorry. Montgomery. Hopefully Monroe County. I'm hopefully. I'm sorry. That was uh, Montgomery County. I meant Montgomery County. Okay. Okay, Montgomery County, no, no, but, but unfortunately the other thing of what you didn't say there is do we know about injuries? That uh, I do not know. But, uh, okay, well, no. I mean, uh, we'll take no fatalities and hopefully the number of injuries were, um, were limited as well. Unfortunately, this is the same thunderstorm here, um, thunderstorm tracking over a long period of time, and it was not difficult to figure out where this one um, produced the tornadoes there as it's uh, wrapped up multiple times. Now, Bexar is the, um, the next area in the path of this. Um, very near I-22. I, I haven't mentioned this. We mentioned the time of crossing. I haven't mentioned this. We've got to stop folks back in Tremont. They can't be coming past Tremont and they can't be coming past Hamilton, Alabama. If you know some folks out here, at the very least, this is probably 70 miles per hour. Could be greater than that. National Weather Service mentioning just a moment ago, 80, 90 mile per hour winds. That's completely reasonable on this. I show straight line winds and it's not perfect angle from the radar site. Yeah, it shows 80 mile an hour winds. And, you know, wind change there of within a short distance of about, I mean, 100, 100 miles per hour or more. So at the very least, it's damaging straight line winds. But that's going to knock over some semis if they didn't stop along very on the kind of the west side of Hamilton there. Um, that's going to come through on Marion County and possibly knock some over if it's not producing a tornado. And tornado is still very reasonably possible on this as well. Um, while I do not have the damage showing up on here, debris being detected, um, that's not foolproof. Um, so let's get another storm track on this as we track this, generally speaking, um, still toward the Hodges area. Phil Campbell also in the path of this. I know some folks that have had some historic um, tornadoes over the years. Um, over top of I-22, west of Hamilton, Alabama right now. What is it? At least 80, 90 mile per hour winds. Maybe still a tornado in the generation phase. Um, uh, but you can see there, Hackleburg we show at 1137 for you, damaging straight line winds um, and an area circulation that could produce a tornado. Uh, Phil Campbell at 1145, Russellville 1149, Mount Star at 1153, Old Bethel shortly thereafter. Um, Reports of, um, from fire department folks, um, lots of trees down to power out in Amory. That should not be a shock to anybody, unfortunately. Um, so, unfortunately, significant. That's the first, uh, what we've gotten. Um, also, potentially, and we need to try to get somebody, if we can, to confirm this, some reports potentially of gas leaks in Amory as well. That doesn't happen unless some, that's not a good sign. So here's hoping that is not the case. Um, but even the National Weather Service says they're hearing of damage, significant damage in Amory through Smithville. So with that as a backdrop, northwest of Hamilton, Alabama, that is what we are dealing with here. So first off, real quick for a moment. If you're in Mississippi from this specific set of storms, a specific long track storm that after causing um, significant damage out in Rolling Fork, in Silver City, in Winona, or at least on the southeast side of Winona, and now in Amory and Smithville near Wren, after doing all of that, this storm has finally exited Mississippi and is now in Marion County, Alabama. So our tornado warning, as you can see now, being peeled off of the television screen because of that there. Uh, unfortunately, though, for folks out here on the north side of Hamilton, Alabama, 
you're still in the thick of this here. Um, last scan, we showed it near Bexar. As I look for tornado debris, I do not have it current scan. Um, that's not to say that there isn't something there that, 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 that's, you know, missing. I do show my latest scan as of 18, so we're two minutes old, so we should get a new one here in a minute. So let's get a storm track on this with kind of all the everything that we can put on it. I have it kind of behind me on the screen, so I apologize. I'm standing in front of the area of interest. We're just trying to get as many roads in front of this as possible. So Gravel Springs Junior High School we show at 1122. We're moving toward the um, Bethlehem Methodist Church. This is, these are all in Marion County, Alabama. As I put up those tornado safety rules, um, you'll notice that um, we, those haven't changed all night. We need to respond accordingly to these. Uh, be in the lowest floor of a sturdy structure, a small windowless room where we can wrap up in blankets, pillows, put on a helmet to protect ourselves from debris, and stay there until we can give you the all clear. Um, and again, as we did a minute ago, on the Mississippi side, we are all clear from this specific storm. Um, but unfortunately, on the Alabama side, out here in Marion County, Alabama, that is not the case. And the phrase that I've used multiple times, haven't used in the last 10 minutes or so, um, tornado-like damage possible from this. Whether it's producing a tornado or not, weather service folks, I'm um, reminding that it's possible to get tornado-like damage out of this thunderstorm because of all the uh, 80, 90 mile per hour winds. So I look at the, see, you'll see how the color's changing a little bit as they're trying to get a better angle on it. I mean, this is a wide swath there of 80, plus mile per hour winds and certainly just on the regular wind mode we're typically used to. I don't have the same kind of perfect interaction there but it's definitely some strong and probably damaging winds out of that. I want to bring in our meteorologist John DeLusick and Anae Scales here for a moment. Um, anything we're seeing on social media? Uh, well, it's Stuff that's not at our attention yet, but uh, definitely uh, some Let's of the Let's pull John full for a moment okay. here. I uh, just want to mention that some things, yeah, it's, it's really bad in, in the Amory area, as you mentioned. Uh, but um, uh, again, like I mentioned, the good news is that uh, Montgomery County, again, Montgomery County, the EMA director says that everything is fine there, at least from the death standpoint. Uh, we do not know about injuries and obviously damage still, obviously. Uh, but the folks are certainly looking into it big time. Uh, so again, Folks, it's just one of those things that uh, you just got to pray for the folks and hopefully get through it tonight. Absolutely, John. I mean, that's, uh, that's I mean, what, what do you do in this situation when you've had, you know, bad tornadoes potentially um, touch down there? Um, so that is the history with this storm. Is it producing a tornado at this moment? Well, it's for the last about three hours off and on produced tornadoes along its track. And mo most times they have been strong tornadoes. Um, so while I can't say for sure this is producing a tornado at this instant, I don't think that changes anything. I think we need to be in that tornado safe place because by the time we confirm it, it's already done something, right? So by the time we say a tornado has touched down, it's already done something. And so considering the history of significant damage and um, the size of the tornadoes uh, that we've likely seen out of these, um, we just have to make the assumption that this could produce it again uh, within moments. Um, this is not, uh, this does not look quite as well organized as it did for tornado production earlier, but I can definitely see if you just, if I make this blurrier, you know, sometimes things change and become a little more obvious. Maybe there's just an aging thing I've noticed, but as I get older, you squint sometimes and sometimes you could see something that you couldn't already see. As I change this over to a kind of a, a, a more smooth look and I pull off those tornado safety rules for a moment, you'll notice how this almost kind of looks like one of those hurricane symbols, right? This whole part here is rotating, and so it's, it's, it's definitely rotating. I don't know if it has clean enough air getting in to produce a tornado, but even if it doesn't, that rotation with it is definitely pushing some extremely strong winds. This whole area red here rotating around is 80 plus mile per hour winds north of Weston here near County Highway 25. These are in Marion County, Alabama, approaching County Highway 20. This is uh, County Highway 29 and uh, moving toward Alabama Highway 187. Um, all locations where these 80 to 90 mile per hour winds um, potentially potentially as strong as that. Who knows? It's hard to say exactly at the surface. We might have some that are um, at least that strong, maybe even a little bit stronger. That's where those are showing up right now. I know it's really smoothed out here a little bit, but I want to look down here towards Solagent. It does look 
Um, there still might be some wind potential with this here. Let's take a look at the wind mode on this a couple different ways. Still some strong straight line wind potential out of this. But I think the strongest of that has stayed just a little north. Maybe Henson Springs there. I'm not as convinced for Solajet. Let's, let's put this back to where we go to the regular smoothing so we can see a little more detail out of it. Now we're done squinting. Um, as I look along this jagged line, there's, I'd say, more flooding potential than anything else on this section here because it's just not moving very quickly. And so there is going to be some flash flooding issues. We've already had them, but there's going to continue to be some flash flooding issues potentially out there uh, into tonight. I don't really see as much of the damaging wind potential moving through Solgent there. So, so that at least the best positive thing I can tell you. But up here where we have been watching this uh, storm that's produced the multiple strong tornadoes today, um, it's definitely an area of uh, strong damaging winds wrapping up and impacting this at this time. Hello? My weather call is trying to tell me you're all clear. It keeps trying to tell me I'm all clear. Um, and now I'm like, yeah, I get it. But that's one of those things. Sometimes it's important. I call you for the all clear um, when we do the, wet, um, the weather calls, but also we tell you all clear on the air, so that applies as well. Let's reset here for a moment. Current time is now 1127. I'm Chief Meteorologist Matt Lopon alongside our meteorologist John DeLusick uh, and Anais Scales. Um, we have not talked to a lot of our folks in the field the last few hours. Many of them are trying